the studio came to me. Um, I want to say the studio, um, Jerry Wayne is the studio. Um, he, he said, um, I got a role that I think you were born to play. His name's Robert. I said, whoa, stop right there, I'm in. What's character and what's Joe Hersey? Like, how much do you bring to the character? I mean, was, was Rob a stretch for you to play? I mean, total different guy, or night and day. It's like uh, it's like comparing uh, bananas and um, banana peels. Uh, Rob is the actual banana inside, and I had to peel away some layers. <sighs> Joe Hersley grows on trees. You know, Joe Hersley's uh, they don't grow on trees. There's only one. <laughs> it's me, um, but. When you when I when I jump into a, a, a when I jump into a, a role, uh, I like to I like to say uh, like pretend I'm a migrant worker on a banana farm. I like to go by and say those are ripe, and I'll slice them down, and then I'll I'll, I'll peel away me. Right, right. Completely so. different. Rob is a druggie. Um, a lot of times to remind myself that I was a druggie, I'd, I'd be a druggie. Uh, a lot of times I'd, I'd use uh, the C-pin, um, which is a clothespin. Um, it was my own method that I came up with, and I would just attach it. I would attach it on my nipple, um, and it would remind me to feel the pain. Um, it would remind me to, you know, uh, dig deep uh, into into um, a cavern that uh, a lot of times your, your your flashlight, your headlight, whatever, didn't didn't work, and uh, there was there's. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of dark places you have to go as an actor in that cavern. And um, I started preparing for the role about 16 years before I actually got the audition. Alan White's uh, from Australia. Uh, I don't know how he got over here. Um, it's not my business. The business is, is he's over here. And uh, he reached into a uh, hat, uh, which we will refer to as casting tapes. And... Uh, and uh, he pulled out a magic rabbit that we'll refer to as Joe Hursley. And, um, and uh, he would come into a scene a lot of times very forcefully. Um, and he would say, I love what you're doing. Um, just don't do it. Don't do that. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you know I'd, a lot of times I would say, uh, okay, um, you know, since it's his picture and stuff. But um, he was great. Uh, Jerry Wayne, um, who, who kind of got this uh, puppy up and running. Uh, he was another guy who, who you know, um, Jerry. Just just so you know, um, I I I, I like the vision of Rob uh, Robert. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> but uh, in the end, I want to make some choices, and uh, so I rewrote um, a third of the script, and uh, it never got used. So we went back to the original script, but I rewrote it and um, showed the extra effort. You know, a lot of uh, end of the line. You know, put put a lot of coal in the train, a lot of gold coal in the train, but it's only going to chug a chug a choo choo until you put dynamite on the tracks. And a lot of times, I was my own dynamite. <laughs> Jeremy Sisto was a dream to work uh, with. He's a you know fellow MA, which is a method actor, um, and I learned a lot by watching him um, before the movie. He had no idea um, that I was taking notes. Um, uh, Heather, um, so she she loved sharing my iPod, and I'd always say, you know what, take the right channel um, because those were mostly guitar riffs, and I'm a bass man, um, so I get a lot of the bass. She get a lot of guitar, but when our eyes met, um, it was a lot of the same song. Uh, she's a great actress, though. You know, uh, you know her work. Um, she's she hasn't. She's not. She gave me her number. She gave me her number. She came out to. Um, she well, we were going to meet for lunch. She had some auditions. I play hardball. Um, uh, so when 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 craft service uh, when craft service came came on set, they were bringing a lot of barbecue, a lot of uh, you know heavy stuff. Hey, why don't you hit me over the head with that hammer over there and, and bring me down? Uh, I've got a lot of uh, things I need to pull out in this in this in this um, in this scene, and I don't need uh, brisket uh, saying, "Hey, I'm your anchor," <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I, I set up my own craft services. I had my own table. I made a little note. It was in a sharpie. And I, I put Joe Hersley's, you know, "Don't touch," and uh, no one even, you know, tried to. No one touched it. Um, 
but just so they knew, you know. Um, and it was mostly organic fruits and stuff, kiwis, which was, Alan White was like, oh, you know, are you trying to make fun of me because I'm from Australia, I'm a kiwi, you know, like, it's in your head, but it was subliminal. Uh, Brian Edding. Brian Edding, uh, he was producer, executive producer. Was he? What kind of producer? producer. A producer. He, um, total showboat. Uh, you know, uh, he would stop me in the middle of scenes and say, uh, uh, those are Jake's lines. And um, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, well, I wasn't stealing his lines. He said, no, those, the, the coat that you have in your pocket, those are Jake's lines, just so you know where to come from in the scene. And uh, I said, actually, this is my Coke. Uh, Jake's, Jake's is over here. Uh, but regarding the scene lines, um, he said, stop saying Jake's lines. I said, well, I thought we wanted the scene to move a little faster. You know, if I've got to, if I've got to run past it and, you know, break the ribbon, you know, when I'm running the race and break that ribbon myself and say, hey, catch up because I don't have time to uh, tie your shoes. Get some Velcro or something. Um, that's what we do. That's what we did. Uh, that's who we are. That's who I am.